Okay, before we even get started, I'm going to establish one thing that's absolutely not up for discussion. David Draymond is an incredibly skilled musician. He's got a great voice, he's a wonderful performer, and he's well thought of. So that's not up for discussion. Also, in a conversation of whether or not I have any right to talk about anything, I have been a professional musician for 17 years. Also, recently, at the Woodshed Experience in Tennessee, Deep Purple guitarist Steve Morse told me I was a great singer twice. So I will not be fielding any more questions at this time about whether or not I am qualified. At the beginning of my YouTube channel, I created a video on Disturbed Sound of Silence. And in a 15 minute video, I mentioned roughly over the space of 30 seconds about why I thought David Raymond had been auto-tuned or pitch connected. And people lost their mind. Zero auto-tune here. David hates auto-tune. David doesn't use auto-tune, he hates it. There's no auto-tune on this. He also trained as a cantor. And my personal favourite, David's temper has a natural resonance to it that reverberates in the same way that sounds like auto-tune. That video got 75,000 views and honestly, I could not understand the massive outcry of people who wanted to tell me that David really hates auto-tune. The entire video was mostly me talking about how fantastic I thought the whole thing was and how I thought David was a particularly gifted singer. And yet, people seem to really latch on to this comment about auto-tune. And I just couldn't understand, why were people getting so upset about one comment? Why would auto-tune, pitch correction or melodyne be seen as some really triggering, offensive thing to say? Especially in modern music when you consider half the time, most of the fans listening to different acts are not even aware of the fact they're listening to a vocalist who has been pitch corrected. Why did David say he didn't like auto-tune? Why is he so dead against it? Why would anyone consider it some massive offensive thing to say? And before we even get into the live Conan performance that is so incredibly controversial amongst Disturbed fans, let's just get into what autotune is and why people are so upset by it. The Collins Dictionary defines autotune as a software package that automatically manipulates a recording of a vocal track until it is in tune regardless of whether or not the original performance was in tune. Pitch correction, a process used in music production to adjust the pitch of a vocal or instrumental performance to achieve a more accurate or desired tone. Melodyne, a sophisticated audio editing software developed by Salem that specialises in pitch correction and manipulation. That's it. Nothing else. Nothing fancy. So before we get into the absolute upsettingness of pitch correction, I need every metal Karen around the world to collectively take a deep breath and let's step into these murky waters. The first notable use of pitch correction on vocals dates back to the late 1990s with the introduction of Autotune developed by Antares Audio Technologies. Autotune was released in 1997 and quickly gained popularity in the music industry for its ability to correct pitch in vocal performances. Now I know when I say that some people get really upset and of course they do, because a lot of us want to know that the music that we're consuming is being made by people who are genuinely talented and not relying on some kind of studio trickery in order to be good. And whilst I will admit, auto-tune and pitch correction were something that was heavily abused in the 90s and early noughties by a lot of artists, but as time has drifted on, things fall in and out of fashion. And whilst pitch correction is absolutely still used consistently today, especially throughout commercial music. At the time in noughties and nineties, live auto-tune and pitch correction wasn't quite as bulletproof as it is now. So of course, miming used to be the thing. So many people miming. And honestly, some people should mime. And before some of you other metal Karens want to get on your high horse and say that this is the kind of problem that's only prevalent in pop music, I will ask you to hold your horses. Pitch correction and auto-tune is absolutely something that is used in other genres, including metal. I would offer that some rock and metal artists absolutely should mime. <laughs> or retire. First, most popular use of auto-tune was of course with Cher and her banger, Do You Believe in Life After Love? I'll be honest, 
This chart topper is probably more prevalent with the gay community than it is with anyone else. It was always supposed to be a fun pop tune that was played in clubs so people could dance. Now was this track that Cher made pushing any new boundaries? The answer? Yes! She was using some new technology, but of course the question is, was this auto-tune used because Cher was not a good vocalist? No! Cher had always been a great singer and performer since day dot, but I think it is fair to say that a lot of auto-tune and pitch correction did find its way into a lot of mainstream artists' performances. But I'll say it now, and I'll say it probably another few times before the end of this video, auto-tune and pitch correction is not a replacement for timber. Vocal timbre refers to the unique quality or colour of a person's voice that distinguishes it from others even when they sing the same note at the same pitch. Which is to say, you can't just have a terrible timbre, then go into the studio, record a bunch of badly pitched notes, then have the sound engineer correct those notes and suddenly have a great vocalist. Here's a little example. I would have given you all of my heart and he's taken just all that I have I would have given you all of my heart That all being said, when you think about Cher's song, the fact is, it was then and is now consumed by people who understand it has been auto-tuned and her voice does not in fact sound like that but it doesn't appear to take away any of the joy that people get from listening to it, singing along to it and dancing to it it doesn't make them look at Cher and think that she's untalented. Which got me thinking, so where exactly is the line of acceptable? So why is it that some artists are forgiven for using things like auto-tune and pitch correction by the people who consume their music, and then other people want to hang them out to dry over it? Why does it appear that some people look at what Cher did and see it as some kind of half ass lazy attempt at being a musician? And some people look at it and go, Cher used some new technology, to create an electronic sounding club tune. Let's move away from pop for a second and let's look at an artist and a genre that might be considered to have more authenticity or just less likely to use something like auto-tune and pitch connection. Let's look at the Sex Pistols. Johnny Rotten could not sing. Bad singer, no technique, dreadful. Sid Vicious often played instruments that were completely out of tune. Paul Cook, consistently went out of time, sometimes only in the space of a few bars. They would consistently walk out into stage and tell the audience that they couldn't give a fuck about being there. They would tell the audience they couldn't wait to get off the stage. They would make aggressive comments throughout their performances about the general not give a fuckery. I'll be honest, I respect it. But the fact of the matter is, if a modern pop star, aka Dua Lipa, walked out onto the stage and said any of these things, they would be burnt at the stake. <laughs> but why? Because here's the horrifying thing. Arguably, these pop stars, who apparently have no authenticity, are quite a bit more talented than Johnny Rotten. <laughs> I know that there are some rock and metal Karens out there currently watching who are about to go and lie in their bed just so they can shit the bait. Stay with me for a second, Blanche. If we look at Johnny Rotten and Britney Spears together, the fact of the matter is, Britney is a better singer than Johnny. Not by much, because she is shite. But she is also a good dancer and a good performer and a hell of a lot more professional than Johnny Rotten. But why do we look at one of those artists and the artist fans will consume that with no issue, but one of those artists, if they use pitch correction, despite the fact they desperately need to, it would be considered some massive, inauthentic, terrible thing for them to do. It's like Johnny Rotten is pre-forgiven, and yet people like Britney is not given the same good graces. This, of course, is all supposing on who it is that you're talking to at the time. Johnny Rotten fans and Britney Spears fans have one thing in common. Oh yes. Neither of them care that the artist that they love is an amazing vocalist. I also think it's perfectly fair to say that neither of these artists would be thought well of for using Pitch Correction. If Pitch Correction was available during the 80s, the Sex Pistols, none of us can say in all certainty that they wouldn't have used it. But the fact of the matter is, if they had, why would that suddenly pull away from all of their authenticity? The message would be the same, the outcry would be the same, but all of a sudden, the use of this one particular kind of technology for some people would suddenly mean that what the Sex Pistols had to say through their art 
was completely unimportant. So what am I missing? Because I'm not going to lie, I still find it incredibly chewy. It's so silly to me that some people would get so up in arms about things like pitch correction and yet have no issue that a guitarist would use lots of different pedal effects, that drummers would use click tracks, that in general a sound engineer's job is to make a band sound better. Taylor Swift. Taylor Swift. Genre? Pop country? I guess? Demographic. White women. Musical content. Live, laugh, love. Likely consumption. Well, oh, you see, that's another thing that we have to contend with these days, is it's not as simple as talking about, well, this particular artist, the fans spend a lot of money, so they're more inclined to want them to be pitch perfect, because the fact is, most people nowadays spend $7.99 a month on their music. They consume it through streaming platforms like Spotify and iTunes. Unless, of course, you're a Taylor Swift fan who spent 400 fucking pounds on a tour ticket, and then you got this. Yeah. You got to. There's no denying. Look at these bitches in the audience. They're having an amazing time. Would I have been really annoyed if I turned up at this performance and Taylor sang like this? Absolutely. If I'd spent £400, I want that bitch pitch perfect. But would I be happy knowing I spent £400 to watch someone sing who had had a computer correcting all of her pitch? I don't think I'd be happy with that either. Okay, let's look at someone that's more in the rock genre. Guns and Roses. Genre? Rock. Musical content? Mm. Life, love and living loud. But when Axl Rose from Guns N' Roses performs like this... Fans are embarrassed on behalf of the artist. Fans get up in arms and go online and talk about how it's unacceptable and how that artist should retire. And it's back to that talent forgiveness thing. Why did Taylor Swift's fans forgive bad intonation, bad technique, whereas Guns N' Roses fans absolutely don't? The truth is, I'm absolutely spitballing here because I just don't know. It would have been really easy for me to come on this video and go, the reason that everyone hates pitch correction and auto-tune is because they associate it with pop stars. Pop stars are mostly women and women get shit for things. Rock stars are mostly men and they don't. But that's just not true. And it's certainly not a conversation of there's more talent in rock and metal than there is in more mainstream genres like pop and country. Because that's just not true either. Because for every piss poor performance there is in pop music, there's plenty of pop stars who are impossibly talented. Enter Christina Aguilera being given her key by an organ on her 2019 tour singing Ain't No Other Man. Enter the lead singer of Motley Crue and whatever the fuck this is. But forgive me, I'm getting super sidetracked. I think when it really all boils down to it, the reason that people have big conversations and falling out about pitch correction and auto-tune is because it's a question of authenticity. Real musicians, real singers don't require these things and those that do use them are seen as lesser than. And therefore, when someone is accused, and accused is probably the correct word, of using these things, it's the insinuation that they're somehow a lesser singer. There was a time when I probably would have agreed with you, but here's the thing. As time moves on, and both our ears and our technology evolve, we won't be able to hear what's been pitch corrected and what's not. Currently, 
there's definitely things that I can hear pitch correction on. And that's the chewy part because I'm a professional musician who's recorded her own music. A lot of the people that I talk to on YouTube and comment sections are not professional musicians who not only get up in arms about pitch correction, but are a lot of the times not even aware that a lot of the artists they listen to and enjoy are using it. They still enjoy the music, they still enjoy the vocals. And because it's starting to become unrecognisable to Joe Bloggs, we will get to a point, whether we like it or not, where listening to an unpitch corrected vocal starts to stick out more to us as being not right. But all of that aside, because that's future everyone else's problem. Let's get back to David Draymond. I think the issue with David Draymond is people are not good at separating their emotion from the facts. People look at David as this incredibly kind, wonderful human being, of course. I would also like to point out at this stage that I've had lengthy discussions with David Dreamer's vocal tutor. I know a lot about him that I probably wouldn't have gotten to know just through the internet. But unfortunately, the YouTube comments and the internet are littered with comments like this. I'm no expert, but I don't hear auto-tune on this. You have concluded your own sentence, sir. You're no expert, but you can't hear auto-tune. That's because you're not an expert. Just auto-tune snapping it directly on the note. He just descends into it and applies that really nice vibrato, even though it's not very nice to listen to. Let's have a listen to those last few notes with auto-tune. Of silence. But it's back to authenticity. People don't want anyone insinuating that David uses these things because they love him. And unfortunately, because of several interviews that he gave to Metal Hammer and other outfits, conveniently right around the time he was promoting an album called Immortalised, he pointed out that he thought auto-tune and pitch connection were the kind of things that were ruining music. That is some real dinosaur chat, if I'm honest. Auto-tune and pitch connection has not yet, and will not in the future, destroy music. But saying these big, crazy, sensationalised things means that the fans are going to latch onto that and then decide, oh well, David hates it, he would never use that and he would never lie to us because of course he has no motivation to lie to us. The hundreds of thousands, if not millions of dollars that we pump into his business through tour tickets, merchandise sales and everything else that he makes is obviously not a corrupting influence. <laughs> but to be fair to David, when he was in these conversations, it was more about him trying to discuss the importance for him of a natural performance of music that he deeply cared about. So I can understand, as someone who's done it as well, saying things like, I don't want to use pitch correction on this because I want it to be really authentic. David talked about in an interview with Kerrang that he loved the sound of silence and he thought it was a performance of a lifetime and he was so excited about it but he was also very aware that some Disturbed fans would see it as a sellout move to cover a song like that. Then there was a whole debacle of him talking about the fact on his Conan performance that he was sick and that the producers use auto-tune without his permission. Even if that were true, pitch correction is still present on the sound of silence track. But here's the thing that shouldn't make you feel lesser towards David. Because why would it? He's a wonderful performer with a wonderful voice. Whether he or his sound engineer or his manager or whomever decided in the studio to use some pitch correction on his voice so that it was incredibly clear in an incredibly sparse arrangement, why would it matter? Because when David performs it live, people still connect with it. One billion people still connected with the actual video. What does it matter if that has been used? It doesn't make him less of a performer. It doesn't make him less of a vocalist. But one thing it does do is creates this weird stigma using a software program and gives your fans whom you've preached to about it a weird snobby elitist attitude towards those who might use it. And I'm sorry, but when it comes to music, if you want to start being snobby, you're going to lose me. A lot of Joe blogs that listen to people like Disturbed and David view pitch correction as some kind of insult and they view it as an insult because the artists that they see who do use it honestly and openly or at least are not good at hiding the fact that they're using it, they see those artists as lesser than David. But again, that's such a snobby, weird, elitist way to look at music. And sorry, but brass tacks, yes, 
David is a better vocalist than Britney Spears. David is a better vocalist than Taylor Swift. David is a better vocalist than Johnny Rotten. But hang on to your hat, Helen. Ariana Grande is technically a better vocalist than David. Like it or lump it. And she uses pitch correction. Whitney Houston, better vocalist than David Draymond. Jasmine Sullivan, better vocalist than David Draymond. But then I guess it all boils down into what you think better is. If you want to talk technique, these singers are better than David. But if you want to talk about connection, well, that's a deeply personal thing. We can't quantify that. We certainly can't bottle that and go, this is the answer. And that's why the pitch correction argument is so stupid because there's plenty of artists who use it and still connect deeply with their fans through their music. And authenticity is wonderful, but if you're gonna bang the drum of authenticity, then you have to practice what you preach. Walk the walk. I wanna hear this performance of Sound of Silence. Because a vision softly came Left in seeds while I was Because whilst the intonation might be floating in and out, whilst the technique's not really that great on this performance, and no, I don't want to hear about him having an off day because enough of you have come into the comment section to tell me he is a trained cantor. If these things are true, there's no such thing as an off day when you're as trained as your fans claim you are. Point is, I want to listen to that because it's still good. It's as good as anything else. Because pitch correction's not the devil. Snobbery is the devil. If you've made it this far into the video, thank you so much. If you are a disturbed fan of you've made it this far into the video, I'm really proud of you. I'm really proud of you for being intellectually honest with yourself and sitting and listening to something that might be uncomfortable. Just because you love someone, it doesn't mean that you shouldn't listen to criticisms of them. You know how many times people have told me that Tom Waits is just a cookie monster? You know how many times people have told me that Tom Waits is rubbish? You know how many times people have told me that the homeless man that lives at the end of my street is just Tom Waits? You know how many times it's upset me? None. Zero. Zip. Zilch. Because music's actually not in fact about the software that we use and whether or not pitch correction's correct and whether or not authenticity is the most important thing. Music's about joy. It's about joy and connection. If you connect with David, it doesn't matter about the things that he uses. Hell, if you connect with Taylor Swift, I don't understand you, but I support you. It was just one of those chewy conversations I wanted to have. Let me know in the comment section your thoughts, feelings, and opinions. Feel free to pop off that you think that everything in here is complete garbage. Feel free to tell me that I don't know what I'm talking about when it comes to Motley Crue. Until next time, my dudes. Stupid fucking fat lazy fucking people glued to their fucking seat. <laughs>